Hello there my friends and welcome back to the Scott Re project. So today then we are going to be doing something a little different. As you may or may not know I'm all about traditional methods, traditional ways. But there is this product on the market that absolutely fascinates me. It's called Meat Glue. Obviously no, not the most attractive name, its full name is Transglutaminase. Now the possibilities of this stuff are absolutely phenomenal. Now before you all switch off, I'm not condoning this, I'm not condemning it. Used in the right way, the possibilities are absolutely fantastic and that is what I'm going to show you today. I had a trial run with this product, with what I'm going to make today, and it turned out absolutely amazing. Now there is loads of stuff on the internet about meat glue. I mean a lot of people when I mention this they go meat glue, uh, you know, you've got to get past that name meat glue and you know and look at it for what it is because it is a stunning product and it is basically like it says a product for gluing protein to protein. Now a lot of places they use this the wrong way, you can take a pound of diced beef, powder it up with a meat glue, then you roll it in cling film leave it in the fridge for four hours and when you cut through it you have got a perfect fillet of beef you know and that's the wrong way to use it and it's being used that way don't get me wrong you know I've seen videos where they've got this massive trim dusted the powder on rolled it up and when they cut through it it's absolutely unbelievable and the thing is it doesn't break down under cooking so you can't even tell there is no seams in it nothing you can't pull it apart so for all intents and purposes it is a perfect piece of meat. But, like I said, that's not what it's for. What I like about it, and this is only the second time I've used it, is what you can achieve with it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fuse together two pheasant breasts with black pudding through the middle and then wrapped in bacon. Now, I shall show you through the process and I, you will absolutely be blown away when you see the final thing because you can't even see any seams. If you imagine when you take a piece of bacon and wrap it around a sausage like pigs in blanket, when it's cooked you can unwrap the, the bacon. With this it just seals completely and like a roll of sticky tape you can't even see the seam where the bacon has stuck to it. So it is really a phenomenal product but like I said I'm not bigging this up I just wanted to show you how it can be used. So without further ado then let's get on. So first of all then, I've got these fantastic pheasant breasts that were shot two days ago and I've got some black pudding. Now all I want to do is make a sausage which will fit down the centre of these pheasant breasts and it will allow me, when I put them top to tail like that, to be able to seal them properly. I think first time round that is not a bad size so I'll just shake that up a bit better because the beauty of this stuff is when you wrap it in cling film you can really shape it so if you wanted to take your time you could actually make a cube of it but I think we've got it all covered there right then time to get the glue out so I've got my tub of meat glue then, it comes in two packets. I know it's not the most attractive sounding thing, but it's easier than saying transglutaminase. Now what I need to do then is put some in my retro flour shaker and put the lid on. So then you want a nice tray you can work on. I've got my gloves on, it's crazy I know that you can eat it but you've got to wear gloves to use it but that's just the way it is. So my pheasant breast I am just going to lightly dust with the meat glue and then that sausage we fitted and again with the other side. Now I don't want to keep repeating myself remember I know a lot of guys and girls out there you're going what are you messing about with? You're messing with nature I mean there is a lot out there on the web about this you know do go and check it out 
There's always going to be naysayers. But, you know, personally, I don't think it's that bad if used for something like this. So, okay. There's our basic pheasant breast scent stuffed with our black pudding. So with our streaky bacon, we will give it a dusting. And then we will dust lightly the top of the pheasant breast. And I think if we actually lay this down, thinking about it like that, And I get some more pieces out. Now this is completely tasteless. You won't taste this product. I know, I've tried it. I can vouch for it. It is really, well, witchcraft I suppose. So what I wanna do then is just start rolling this together. You can see you wraps the presents in my house. And then you should be left with this beautiful looking thing. So the stuff we didn't use then, seal it back up. And put this somewhere cool and dark. We are done with that. Next, we need to wrap this really tight in some cling film. So we take our beautiful pheasant, I suppose, roulade. And then you want to get as much tension in this as you can. Now the beauty of this is, this is where you can really go to town. You can spend your time perfect circles into a perfect cube, but I'm just gonna go for the perfect round. And like I said, you know, if you go online onto Google and put in meat glue and then have a look in images, you see some of the work that's been done with this. It really is very impressive. There is a tuna and salmon where they've cut four identical square cubes oblong of salmon and tuna and glued them together. When they cut through it, it looks like a Battenberg cake. Now to me, that is what this stuff is all about, you know? It's not about trying to take all the crap and making money, fooling the customer. It's about creativity. I suppose you could call it molecular butchery. Anyway, once we've got it nice and tight, like that, you can see that's a beautiful round. We just wanna squeeze the air out, and then give it alternate twists, really bringing the tension on. Now you have two options here now. You could leave this in the fridge for a minimum of four hours. That's a minimum of four hours. And then take it out and you could slice through it and then pan fry this and it will be like one continuous piece of meat. Or if you've got a water bath, which is what I'm gonna show you, we could vac pat this and we will cook it for four hours at 59.9 centigrade. And then we can show you we brown it off in the pan after, we can cut through it and we can show you what we've achieved. But have a look at that. Pretty impressive. Right, I'll just quickly vac pack this. So I've got my amazing little vac packer then. Now the beauty of vac packing this is you're gonna get an even more harder seal. When it sucks all that air out and pushes against it, you're gonna get a really good seal, which will really make it bind. So. There you have one nice and tight, sealed pheasant roulade, ready to go into the water bath.
Okay, my dear friends, not only have we gone all scientific and molecular with our transglutaminase or meat glue, but I've also got one of my favorite bits of kit out, this water bath here. Now this is my Burton sous vide machine, an absolutely brilliant bit of kit, especially for cooking game if you wanna keep it tender and moist. It is absolutely brilliant. So as you can see then, it's flashing here. I want this at 59.9. So I'm just gonna go down 59.9 and I will set that and then I will press go and that is starting to heat the water up. Now water baths, like I said, they are absolutely brilliant. Do it slowly at a constant temperature. It never falters, never goes up or down. So you can totally, totally control what you are cooking. Absolutely brilliant. I shall put a link at the bottom actually for these. Okay, so that tells me it's ready at 59.9. You can see in there, beautiful. So in with my roulade. Now, four hours, it will stay at that constant temperature, so just gently, gently, I suppose, poaching, and you get the perfect finished product. And by the magic of camera. So there you go then. Four hours have passed. Now we have a look at this thing that we have created. Just release it from its lovely warm cocoon. Great, great way to cook this. Look at that little ripper, beautiful. So just to recap then, it was four hours in my water bath, my Burton sous vide machine, and then just fried until brown in the pan. So let's see what we have when we cut inside. Through, isn't that a beautiful, looking thing and let's try a bit of this bit here if you look how moist the pheasant is normally dry on the breast that hmm, tastes absolutely awesome well, there you have it there my friends my pheasant roulade stuffed with black pudding and bacon and don't they look brilliant the only thing that lets this down is obviously cutting it. You're dragging the knife through that black pudding. I mean, I wiped my knife every time, but we still got a little bit of smear, but you know, that's just the way it goes. And obviously these end bits, where they're not quite so even, still fantastic, but it's not until you get in the middle and you see the beauty. And just look, if I can squeeze this, the juice that is retained running down my thumb there without squeezing the black put out. That is the beauty of cooking it in the water bath. Meat glue, friend or foe. Now I'm not bigging this up, I'm not dissing it. You know, I'm not condoning it, I'm not condemning it. But to be honest with you, I think for things like this, it's an absolutely great ingredients now you know i'm an old school guy with traditional methods and i imagine a lot of you butchers out there are screaming at the screen saying what are you playing at scott but like i said you know i'm not saying everybody rush out and buy this make products with it and sell it what i am doing is to show you what can be achieved so meat glue friend or foe i will leave you to make up your own mind and if you've liked what you've seen here today, please, please click subscribe down here. Also check me on my social media, Facebook, Scott Reed, the Scott Reed Project, and on my Twitter at the Scott Reed Project. I think you'll see the icon somewhere down here. But like I said, you know, I've been repeating myself all the way through. I'm not saying everybody should be using this. This was just a video to show you what we can do with this fantastic stuff. So until next time, my friends, take care. If you notice, six has become five. How does that work? That must be magic.